I bought a lot of books again. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Now today I'm going to be doing a book haul of all the books that I bought for myself for the month of June so far and also probably like May as well because these books I have been holding on to for a very long time. These books that I bought were bought before um, the Black Lives Matter movement that is currently happening right now. So all these books that I did buy, unfortunately I did not keep in mind of reading diversely or as diversely as I could but going on into the future, I will make sure to always include authors of color and to always try to read as diverse as possible. Um, currently right now we are all very aware or we should be very aware of the things that are happening in America and also across the world. There are a lot of protests going on for the Black Lives Matter movement which is something that's very important that we should always try to learn from and to also learn from others. I'll be leaving links down below in my description for you to donate and to spread the word about certain information. Obviously I am not a person to be the one that's educating you on everything but I highly recommend you to do your own research so go ahead and check out those links and if you do have some money that you can spare consider donating some of that money into those funds to help those in need. So moving back to our book haul. So this month was actually my birthday month. My birthday just passed. It was on June 1st and I happened to celebrate it with my family and my friends who decided to come and social distance with me. It was a great birthday. I really appreciate the time we used to spend together, especially during a time like this where everything seems like it's going into chaos and everything doesn't seem like it's going right in the world. Um, I ended up purchasing some books for myself as well because I wanted to treat myself. Like always, I hoarded all these books for like the month of May and now June as well so there's a lot to show you and um, this month I actually did a very good job and I feel like I'm in a reading mood for historical romances especially so in this haul you'll see me haul a bunch of historical romances. To start I want to show off like the small stack of Julia Quinn historical romances that I did pick up. Um, so Julia Quinn was an author that a lot of people wanted me to read or to review back when I was doing those videos for Lisa Claypass and also for Tessa Dare and they wanted to see my opinion on Julia Quinn so I decided to pick up a lot of her books from the Bridgerton series and also the prequel series to the Bridgerton series which I think is called the Roxby series. I have a couple of the books from the series on my shelf already so I was just kind of filling in the gaps so I purchased On the Way to the Wedding which is actually the last book in the Bridgerton series and and um, I didn't read this book yet but this book is about a man who actually believes in true love so I feel like a lot of romance novels nowadays that I pick up and I read it tends to have the hero not believing in love and it tends the hero to just believe that you know what he's just gonna remain a player for the rest of his life so it's really interesting to see a character who actually believes in true love and is actually trying to like persuade and to also seduce a girl who may not believe in true love. What I found interesting about this book is that the character, the female character's name is actually called Hermione Watson and I think that's just too close to Emma Watson so I'm not too sure how I feel about this book with the names but I'm sure I'm going to enjoy the story. So I guess I should have hauled this book first to show you that this is actually book one in the Bridgerton series. It's called The Duke and I and I really like this cover because it's green and then the card is like this there. But then the thing is, is that when I was planning to buy this book, this book was actually on sale for very cheap. I think it was only on sale for like $6. But I kept putting it off because I didn't think that I would want it. And I didn't think I was going to read it. And then afterwards, when I decided to actually like want to read it, um, this book actually got back to the original price of $11. So I was very disappointed in myself. But nevertheless, I still want to buy the book. So this book follows two characters named Daphne and Simon. And Simon is the Duke. Daphne is like the best friend little sister and Simon never like seen the little sister in many many years and when he finally meets her he realizes that she is like different from all the other girls and he also realizes that he can't be with her because of bro code and he can't seduce her but he also can't keep his hands off of her so I'm excited to read this book and I can't wait to let you guys know how I feel about it. So the next book that I picked up is like I think like the second book in the Bridgerton series called The Viscount Who Loved Me by Julia Quinn and this book follows two characters named Anthony and Kate and basically Anthony is 
the oldest Bridgerton and he decided that he wants to go ahead and get married and live a suitable life. So he picks out like the belle of the ball, which is this like really young girl, like she's only 17, but like at that age and at that this time period, being 17 is like the perfect age for marriage. So like let's not let's not get too weirded out about that. And she, the main the belle of the ball, actually has an older sister, and the older sister thinks that Anthony is a complete rake and that he is going to ruin his her sister like mentally and emotionally so Kate is always trying to like you know be in the relationship and to separate these two and what ha ends up happening is that Anthony actually falls in love with Kate and um this book seems like it's going to have like an enemies to lovers trope as well so I'm very also excited to read this book as well. So the next book that I picked up is The Other Miss Bridgerton and now this one I think like it might be book three of the series of the Roxby series but I'm not too sure but this book follows two characters named Poppy and Andrew and basically Poppy thinks that there is nobody suitable for her on this land and she is like just so tired of trying to find a suitor that she kind of like just goes on adventures and while she was on like an adventure near like the water she figured out like that there were smugglers and then she was kidnapped and then she was put on a ship and then that's where she meets our captain Andrew James Roxby who is like this pirateer or like he is a captain of a ship so he like there's danger because he's always on the seas and then it's their relationship of Poppy and Andrew getting to know each other. Um, I love captains and I love pirates in my historical romances so I'm definitely very excited to read this one. So the last Julia Quinn novel that I think I purchased is First Come Scandal. Now this one is like book four of the Roxby series and this book follows a character named Georgina and Nicholas and now Georgina unfortunately for her she was actually kidnapped by a man that is like not in love with her but is in love with her money so he kidnaps her so that he could ruin her reputation like not doing anything, no sexual assault, but it's just like he kidnaps her so that he can ruin the reputation of Georgina so that Georgina has no choice but to marry him so that he can get her dowry. And it's like that like tragedy of like Georgina like being helpless in a situation. And then that's when their family friend Nicholas Roxby comes in to offer a proposal so that they can actually get married so that he can save Georgina from a marriage without love or just like a marriage like a horrible marriage because Nicholas claims that um, he will never fall in love with Georgina because they've been best friends since they were childhood friends and he's not attracted to her at all but after years of not being on that land and traveling around the world he comes back and sees Georgina is a completely different person so I'm excited to read this book as well and I can't wait to tell you more about it. So the next book that I picked up is another historical romance called Lord Holt Takes a Bride by Vivian Lorette and now I never read any of Vivian's books before but I do own a lot of copies of her books on my shelves. She's definitely an author that I do want to give a try and I just had to buy this book because like the cover is literally like my aesthetic. I love pink and I love red so I really adore this cover a lot. Now this book actually is pretty wild so it follows a character named Winifred Winifred and Asher and now Winifred is an heiress so she's super rich and unfortunately for her she's also like engaged and she's like ready to like walk down the aisle but she also wants to walk down the aisle knowing that she's going to marry someone that she loves so she and her like two wacky friends decide to like figure out like how astrocats like fall in love and how they survive a marriage without love and things like that so they decide to kidnap a lord or they just decide to kidnap a man that is like with high nobility so that they can like figure out and ask all these questions to figure out like what's happening. That's when they kidnap Asher who is a lord who is also riddled with debt so he needs someone that he is going to marry so that they can provide a huge dowry so that he can like maintain his land and things like that. But anyways Asher realizes that Winifred is actually an heiress so now Asher is completely invested and interested in Winifred except for the fact that he wants to play it cool and to not fall in love but some things you can't stop and prevent. So the next book that I purchased is Say Yes to the Duke by Eloisa James and now this book is a book that Jessica from Peace Love Books and also I don't know sure if Lacey actually read this book but um 
they don't like this book because like they think that this book was very slow or it moved in a way that it didn't make any sense but unfortunately for them I didn't listen to their advice because I really really like the step back of this book and I thought the step back of this book was just like so different and so scandalous from a lot of step backs that I've seen so far printed nowadays so that's why I decided to just buy it because I really really wanted to own a copy of it because it's just so pretty um so it's pretty sad because I already know that like I might not like it but then like I'm still buying it anyways regardless the synopsis sounds really good so um this book follows a character named Viola and Viola is very shy and she just wants to marry a quiet man and live like a nice life being shy together so she's in love with a vicar and then um she is ready to like seduce the vicar and to go on with like a marriage and everything but then her reputation is ruined by a duke and then now this duke I think this duke falls like head over heels in love with her and he decides to like try to seduce her and try to get her to marry him she's like I don't want this because I don't love you. He's going to do whatever it takes to marry Viola, even though Viola might be in love with someone else. So I think this book might be very angsty, but also Jessica said nothing really happened in this book and it was really boring. So we don't know. So the next historical romance that I purchased is Sophie Jordan's The Virgin and the Rogue. And it's like in the Rogue File series. And um, I never really did my wrap up. Not like I never really did. I never did my wrap up for the historical romance readathon that I was hosting with Lacey and Jessica because I was just so lazy afterwards like after like five days of consistently posting a historical romance video i decided to just like stop posting historical romance videos so uh sorry if you guys wanted to know how many books i read during that readathon spoiler alert i started way before because i got too excited so in total of like two weeks i read like 18 historical romances and one of the authors that i did focus a lot on was sophie jordan because i just love sophie jordan's books and brief from falling over romance or Brie Hill on YouTube she actually read this book already and she keeps telling me how good it is and I'm like I know sis but like I need to savor it because like I've read so many Sophie Jordan novels now that like I'm running out of books and I have to go into her extreme backlist novels that are like printed back in like the 2000s like the early 2000s so like I want to savor the books that I do have on my shelf. So this book follows two characters named Charlotte and Kingston and like Charlotte is like a boring character is like what they try to describe it as and she follows all the rules so she's not a rule breaker so she kind of has like a formulaic approach to life so her parents are not surprised that she's going to marry her childhood sweetheart but then it's only until she drinks like a healing potion where she turns into like someone else that she doesn't think she is she suddenly I guess she has like a seductress like personality and she's very confident in her sexuality and she starts making out with a raid in Kingston and then now Kingston's like swept away by this passion and it's only until he realizes that I guess like she's betrothed to his stepbrother or something like that that so then now he is trying to seduce her but then she's just like no it's never gonna happen ever again and it was just like a one night thing and like everything so I'm excited to read Sophie Jordan's novels um Sophie Jordan's novels are usually very fluffy and it has like an intense like emotion towards like attraction for each other I feel like the attraction between the characters and the chemistry you can actually like see it on the page and you, actually, you can actually feel it so I'm really excited to read this one. Now the next book that I have to show you is The Earl Takes a Fancy by Lorraine Heath and I was telling my friends Jessica and I don't know if I told Lacey yet but I started reading Lorraine Heath's like books and I found a new queen like her historical romances are completely different from any historical romances that I do read she is not afraid to like put a modern twist to the tales and like to make it scandalous and to make it hot and sensual and to also make the characters stuck in like situations that like make you feel like that they have have no way out and it's just so complicated like the characters are complex and it's just fantastic and I love Lorraine Heath now so I was very excited that I picked up this book way before I fell in love with her. Um, so this book follows a character named Fancy and Fancy was born out of wedlock so back in the day that's very scandalous that you are born out of wedlock because society doesn't think that you are like an actual person at this point and basically she is just like she she is stuck in a predicament 
predicament where nobody kind of wants to marry her because of her lineage. So she has a bookstore and she sells books and then there's always this one man that keeps visiting the bookstore and she's very curious about him. And now his name is actually Matthew and Matthew is an earl and he was recently whittled and I guess like everybody really wants to marry him because he comes with money, he comes with a title, he comes with everything and good looks and things like that. He is in the bookshop every single day to avoid these ladies that keep like coming to him and to like keep trying to get his attention and Fancy and Matthew actually have like one kiss and that kind of triggers everything and starts everything. So I'm very excited to pick up this book because I know Lorraine does a great job at writing historical romances with a lot of tension and heat. So the next book that I purchased is actually a book that I purchased today. So the day that I'm filming this and it's called The Wedding Bargain by Victoria Alexander and I've never read Victoria Alexander's works before. I actually don't even know this author but but um, when I was going to the bookstore, I saw some authors that I've never seen before, so I decided to give her a try. So this book actually follows a character named Pandora, and Pandora is like a lady, like she has a lot of money, and um, she doesn't want to marry a man that doesn't invoke any emotion within her. She wants like the fiery passion, and she wants to feel something when they're holding each other and when they're making love and kissing and things like that. And it turns out that the only person that makes her feel this way is a man named Maximilian. And now Maximilian's actually an Earl and he can't believe his eyes that like, this lady is coming to him with like this proposal which is like to wed and they actually start in agreement with each other. Um, the synopsis doesn't really tell us much about the agreement but I think the agreement is a little bit like a game and it's like a sexualized game. So I'm excited to read this historical romance because it sounds like it's going to be a very fun one. So the next book that I picked up is an Elizabeth Boyle book called If Wishes Were Earls and I showed Jessica this book and then I went to my shelves and I saw the collection of Elizabeth Boyle's books on my shelves and I realized that I already have a copy of this book. So now I have two copies and that means that I need to return one of these copies. So this book follows two characters named Harriet and Roxley and now Harriet and Roxley are really attracted to each other so they kind of have like a scandalous night. Harriet's kind of convinced that Roxley will marry her and that will give like a proposal but then when she returns back to London she sees that Roxley is actually almost going to marry someone else. So Harriet is still convinced that Roxley is attracted to her and is in love with her so Harriet actually goes forth and tries to seduce him so that he can like man up and like marry her but then Roxley himself has his own internal issues of like why he can't marry her because he wants to protect her from danger so I'm excited to read this book because I think it's going to be very interesting to see a female character in historical romance try to seduce a man. So the next historical romance novel that I have I think this one has to be my last historical romance novel that I hauled but it's a book by Lisa Bernay and now Lisa Bernay. I don't actually know how to say her last name but Lisa's books like I do have a couple of her books on my shelves because her covers are just like very pretty. Like I really like that like look and this book is called The Bride Takes a Groom and basically Catherine is coming from a wealthy family once again but she is actually like a pawn in her parents like game so they're trying to exchange her hand in marriage for something for their personal gain and Catherine does not want any part of that deal because it's her life and she's going to marry someone that she actually wants. So when she sees that the captain Hugo Penhollow comes back from like eight years of traveling around the world and the seas she sees her escape so she decides to put up an offer that it's basically if you marry me I'll give you my dowry and I'll give you money and so that you can settle all your debt. I think this book will be pretty fun to read too. So the next book that I have right here is actually a book that was sent to me from a publicity agency to promote this book on my Instagram so if you don't follow me on Instagram yet definitely go check it out the links are always in the bio. So this book is called Always a Bridesmaid by Cindy Madsen and now this book is like a book that is set in the wedding season so I'm very excited to read this one because I love weddings in my romance novels. So this book follows a character named Violet and Violet is always a bridesmaid so I think like if you ever watched that 27 Dresses romantic comedy starring Catherine Hegel then you would really appreciate this one because she is always a bridesmaid and she's perfectly fine with planning her friends weddings too as well and making sure that everything is set for the wedding but you know what like 
you know, she's getting kind of lonely and she kind of wants to get married. And then um, her boyfriend actually dumps her and she's like putting on a brave face thinking that everything's okay. And then she accidentally starts a fire. And that's when the cute firefighter named Ford comes in and helps save the day. And now Ford is instantly attracted to Violet. And then this is their love romance story. And I'm super excited to read it because I think it's going to be a very cute romance. So I decided that after a quick review of how much footage I actually had for this haul, I realized that I have a lot more books to go and it will be easier if I just split this book haul into parts. So it's going to be like part one and part two and maybe possibly part three. But thank you guys so much for watching part one of this book haul. And if, again, once again, I do have links down below for Black Lives Matters if you want to make a donation to help support a cause that is actually very important and it's very pressing right now. But until next time, I'll see you guys again. Bye.